All right, so we've already talked about motion in a one dimensional direction. So we were mostly talking about along the X axis. All right, so two dimensional motion is across the X and the Y axis, okay? So the difference between a vector and scalar quantity, which you will uh, need to know. All right, so your vector quantity has both direction and the magnitude. So this is the direction of the movement and the uh, size or magnitude of that movement. And then scalar quantities is just the magnitude or size. All right, so vectors are represented by a letter and it has an arrow across the top. And that lets you know that um, you are talking about the vector component. All right, so the equality of two vectors, this is when you have two vectors that are equal. So they have the same magnitude and the same direction. You can also add two vectors together. Um, so they also have like the triangle method of addition. So this is where you have your vector A, you draw it out, and then your vector B, all right? So your vector drawn from the tail of A is gonna be to the tip of B, all right? So that's the triangle method of addition. Um, when you add two vectors together, their sums are independent of each other. So the vector of A plus the vector of B is still equal to the vector of B plus the vector of A, all right? So even if you switch the, the order, you should still have the commutative law addition properties. Uh, so if you have one vector that is negative, so A minus B is the same as the vector of A plus negative B. All right, so here we have a figure. All right, so when you add vector B to vector A, all right, you see vector A here is horizontal. Vector B has both an X and a Y component. So we go and we draw the resultant vector from the tail of A to the tip of B. So from where you start from all the way to where you end up finishing at. All right, so if we were to switch that around and draw vector B first and then vector A, you would have the tail going from uh, the starting point from B all the way to the tip of A. All right. Okay, so your components of a vector, your vectors, again, they are two dimensional. So they have an X component and they have a Y component, all right? So you add those X and that Y component together in order to get the total vector, okay? So if you see over here in figure 3.7, all right, we have vector A, all right, in the first quadrant between the positive x-axis and the positive y-axis, all right? So the distance between that and the x-axis is your theta, that's your angle. Along your x-axis is the length component along the x-axis. And then the height is along the y-axis. So you would add those sides together or you would uh, get the resulting angle um, from those two individual components for x and y, right? Um, so to find your X component of your vector A, you would do the length of the vector. So again, vectors are magnitude and direction. This would be the magnitude or the size of the vector. All right, you will multiply that times cosine theta to get your X component of your variable, I mean, of your vector. So for the y component, you would do the magnitude of the size of the vector times sine theta, all right? If you guys remember um, from part one where we talked about um, having two sides of a triangle and being able to find a third side, um, that's pretty much what this is. This is Pythagorean theorem. <clears throat> so your resultant side is from your x-axis plus your y-axis because your vector has two components. It has length and it has a height, all right? So tangent, which if you remember your uh, 
trig functions, uh, sac of toa, all right? So toa is your tangent, and that's gonna be opposite of the angle, which is your y variable divided by the adjacent, which is your x variable. So that's why you have theta being equal to uh, inverse tangent, so inverse is to the minus one power, of your y component of your vector for your x component of your vector. All right. All right, so again, to get those uh, components for x and y, you would just add those uh, vectors together. All right, I'm not sure if we went over acceleration yet. I believe that's the next chapter. But acceleration is your change in speed or velocity over time, which is also a vector because it has both a magnitude and a direction. But we'll go more in depth on that in chapter four. All right, so vectors. Um, the big gist is pretty much knowing the difference between uh, scalar quantities and vector quantities. Um, also, you know, familiarizing yourself with the trig functions um, and the commutative properties of vectors. Okay. So chapter three, again, is on vectors. Your vectors have both magnitude, which is the numerical value of the vector, and then it'll have a direction, all right? So there's a difference between scalar quantities and vector quantities, all right? You will see these questions again, so make sure you familiarize yourself with those differences. So your scalar quantities, they only have the magnitude or size, all right? So this is the numerical value. And scalar quantities are like mass, which is in kilograms, time, seconds, uh, distance, and meters. We haven't talked about energy, volume, and speed quite yet, um, but we will get into that. Um, we'll get into volume and speed a little bit later uh, this semester, but energy, um, we won't really talk about that quite yet. I think that's uh, more so a couple chapters down the road. All right, so your vector quantity, again, it has both magnitude, so it has the numerical value as well as the direction of motion. All right, so that's your displacement, your velocity, your acceleration, your force, momentum, and your electric fields. Now we haven't gone over most of this stuff yet, so I know some of this isn't gonna make much sense to you quite yet. Um, displacement is the change in position relative to your starting point and your ending point. So we've gone over that. So you guys should be familiar with uh, distance and displacement, but uh, velocity, acceleration, force, momentum, and the fields, um, that's going to be a little bit later in the semester. We won't really talk about electric fields until physics too. So again, some of these are not going to make much sense to you now, but they will later on. All right, so how to draw a vector. All right, so when you draw your vector, you're going to have different sides, right? You're going to have the tail end. So this is your starting point. And then you want to have the tip end with your arrow at that tip point, which indicates the direction that you're headed towards. All right, so again, your vector has size. So your size is your length of the vector, how long it is. And then direction is the, um, the arrow across the tip that lets you know what direction you're moving in. All right, so the magnitude of the vector, all right, so this is the numerical value, such as your height. All right, so the magnitude of vectors. So if you have vector A right here on the left, which represents a displacement of three miles to the north, and then you have vector B, which is twice as long as A. So you see this arrow here is twice as long as our arrow on the left. All right, this will represent six miles to the north. All right, so being twice as long means you need to have twice the distance in the length of that vector. They're both headed in the northward direction. So the directions are the same between A and B, 
is just A is shorter than B and B is twice as long as A. All right, equal vectors mean they have the exact same length and they're moving in the exact same direction. All right, so if we were to overlay these vectors on top of each other, they would be identical. All right, that's what equal vectors mean. That means they are the same. All right, inverse vectors means they're moving in opposite directions, okay? Inverse just means opposite. So if we have vector A here moving in the northeast direction, that means the inverse of northeast is gonna be southwest, all right? So this, it, so make sure you guys are um, pretty much familiar with your directions, north, south, east, west, all right? Because sometimes that's how it's gonna be described in the um, homework problems and things. Um, so you have to make sure you're aware of those directional um, measurements as well. So your inverse vectors means they have the exact same length, all right? They're just moving in opposite directions, all right? So positive is to the north and east, and then the negative inverse vector is to the south and the west. Opposite, but, you know, same length. All right, so these are your vector properties. So your commutative property, this is where you can switch A and B around and they still pretty much equal the same thing. So A plus B is the same thing as B plus A. All you did was switch the order, but the actual amount is still the same between A and B. The associative property, that's a switch as well. So here on the left-hand side, we have A plus B in parentheses plus C and then it's equal to A plus, and then you have B plus C in the parentheses instead of A plus B. All right, so they are associative properties. Um, zero property is where you have opposite vectors that are equal and they cancel out to be zero. So say we have a positive five vector for A, and then the vector for B is negative five. So five minus five is zero. So that's the zero property, right? This only happens if you have vectors of equal magnitude, but they're pointing in opposite directions. All right, so you also have the subtraction properties. Um, this is where you, um, so here on the left-hand side, we have A minus B, which is also equal to A plus negative B. And then we have our multiplication properties. And this is where we, you know, pretty much magnify the length of the vector or the magnitude, the numerical value. So if we had a vector A and we wanted to make it three times the size, we would stretch out that vector um, three times the size of the original to get 3A. All right, so again, you do need to be familiar with the, you know, compass arrows. Uh, north is upward, south is downward, east is to the right, west is to the left, All right? So making sense of this is gonna help you when it comes to doing some of the homework problems. Um, we also talked about the radians or the degrees around the uh, circle, around our four um, quadrants, right? So your x-axis um, starts at zero. If we go up to the y-axis, that's 90 degrees. If we go over to the negative x-axis, that's 180. Um, the negative y-axis is 270. And then a back around to the positive x-axis is 360 or zero again, all right? So our 180 degrees is pi, okay? Pi over two is 90 degrees. Three pi over two is 270 degrees. And then um, we have zero degrees right here. Um, so no pi's here along the positive x-axis. 
So again, don't forget your quadrants. Um, quadrant one is 90 degrees. Quadrant two is from 90 to 180 degrees. Quadrant three is from 180 to 270. And then quadrant four is 270 to 360. So some of this is just a uh, review. Uh, we kind of went over this um, kind of during the first portion of chapter one. All right, so you have your compass, uh, your basic directions, so your north, south, your east, your west, and then you have your in-betweens. Okay, so northeast, you got north, northeast, east, northeast. Um, all of these are, you know, based on the direction of motion. All right, so there's different ways that you can add vectors together. Um, there's different uh, methods. Uh, three main ones are the parallelogram method. We got the tip to tail method, which is what we will be using. And then there's the mathematical method, all right, which uses trig functions. All right, so these are the vectors that are used to be right angles. So we will be using mathematical method as well because you know physics is mostly math. All right, so your parallelogram method, this is where you arrange the vectors tail to tail in the correct direction and draw it to scale. All right, so you draw two identical vectors all right, as the originals to form your parallelogram. And then you draw in the diagonal uh, to find your resultant. <clears throat> and then you measure that resultant to find the angle. All right, so this is an example of the parallelogram method. All right, so you see here your vectors for A are in the exact same direction. They're also the exact same length. They're just drawn a certain amount of space apart. Same thing for vector B, all right? Vector B, which is in red, all right? Uh, they are uh, identical. They're just drawn a certain distance apart to connect our vector A to our other vector A. So in between, we will have the resultant of that vector and that's the parallelogram method, All right? So you take one vector, you double it up, take the other vector, you double it up, and then what's in between is your resultant. All right, so this is like a Concurrent force example is like a tug of war kind of uh, parallelogram here where we have tug of war not just on two sides but on four sides. All right, so your resultant, which we talked about earlier, your Pythagorean theorem, that's when the sum of two or more vectors um, equals your third side, which is called your resultant vector. All right, so your tip to tail method, this is what we will be using. All right, so you arrange the scaled vectors from tip of one to the tail of the next. So you draw the resultant from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the second vector or the last vector. Sometimes you'll have more than one or two vectors. All right, and then you determine the magnitude of the resultant and you find the angle from the base of that resultant, all right? So I'm not gonna require you guys to do, use rulers or protractors, just gauge the size um, and make it make sense. So let me pull up a whiteboard. All right, so let's say we have vector A pointing northward. All right, so let's say this is vector A. All right, so this is the starting point. So this is the tail, all right? This is the, uh, sorry, this is the ending point, which is the tip, all right? So if we have vector A and we're trying to add vector A to vector B, so let's put A plus B. All right, and let's say vector B is to the east. So let's do vector B.
All right, so our resultant would be between where we started from, which is gonna be the tail end of the first um, vector towards the tip end of the second vector. So our resultant vector will be from the beginning of A to the ending of B. All right, I know that doesn't look right, but it's kind of hard to draw on these things. All right, so this will be our resultant vector. All right, so your resultant vector is from the start of vector A to the end of vector B. Your start is just where your, where your line begins. Your ending point is where the tip where your arrow is. Okay. All right, so you have your displacement as vectors as well. And they just say, hey, this person or this object moves north at such and such miles or such and such meters. Um, you're pretty much gonna be drawn to scale your vectors. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let me go back to the whiteboard. Let's clear this off. All right, so let's say they tell us vector A Vector A is five meters north. And then they tell us that vector B, vector B is seven meters west. All right, so we're gonna start with vector A. We need to draw five meters north. So let's just do, let's say this is five meters. All right, so this is vector A and it's equal to five meters. And then they tell us that vector B, and let me erase this so that I can kind of redo that. Let's put it on the other side because we're moving west. Okay, so this is vector A, which is five meters north. All right, and then they told us vector B is seven meters west. Now seven is greater than five. So we're gonna have to draw the vector for vector B a little bit longer than we did for vector A. Okay, does that make sense? You need to make sure your uh, magnitudes are kind of drawn to scale. So let's go west seven. So let's, you know, elongate this out a little bit more than we did part A. All right, so we need to make sure that vector A is a bit shorter than vector B. All right, so let's go back to B. All right, and this is vector B, which is equal to seven meters west. All right, so our resultant vector is gonna be from the starting point of A, so where we started from. So this is the tail end of A, all the way to the tip end of B. So our resultant vector would start from A and we would draw it up to B. So this is our resultant vector. So we could pretty much use Pythagorean theorem to find the resultant here. So this would be using the uh, mathematical method, all right, which is the next method in our um, of three methods. So we have the tip to tail method, which is what I just showed. And then pretty much you're trying to draw it to scale. All right, so if I obviously had a protractor or a ruler, I would be able to draw it a bit more cleaner. All right, so don't forget about your angles. So if you have an angle that is over 90 degrees, uh, but under 180 degrees, that's an obtuse angle. 
And then if you have an angle that's less than 90 degrees, that's called an acute angle. So this is back from, uh, I believe this is geometry, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so um, tip to tail method to find, oh, they gave us an example here. So I'll go over that after I do the one I just put up. So you'll have some extra practice. Okay, so our resultant vector. Um, so if you remember uh, our Pythagorean theorem, that was the x squared plus y squared um, is equal to our resultant. So here we will take uh, our x axis to be the, um, the b vector. So that was seven. And we're gonna square that seven. And then our y, which is up and down, that'll be our a vector, which was five. So we're gonna square that too. All right, so our resultant vector is gonna be, uh, okay, so seven squared, that's 49. And then five squared, that's 25. All right, so take out your calculators and do the square root of 49 plus 25. I have 8.6, but what is the SI unit for the resultant uh, side? We got the number, we just didn't get the SI unit. What is the SI unit for the resultant side? Is it in meters? Yes. So our vector A is in meters and our vector B is in meters. So our vector resultant vector is gonna be in meters as well. So that's the SI unit for our vector. All right, so another thing, you cannot add two vectors that have two separate units, okay? We can't add together a vector that's in meters with a vector that's in miles. We would have to convert one to the other in order to add like variables. All right, so you can't add meters to miles. You have to make sure that you convert before you did so. All right, okay, so let's go back to the slides. All right, so here, this tip to tail method has uh, multiple uh, points. All right, so here you have um, your A, is 12 meters, 20 degrees east of north. All right, so this is vector A here. Vector B is 15 meters east. So as you can see, 15 is longer than 12. So they kind of extended that out a little bit more. And then C is five meters. So it's shorter than both A and B. So they made sure that they shortened C, uh, which is 30 degrees northwest. Okay, and then our resultant is gonna be from the starting point of A to the ending point of C. So your starting point is your tail, your ending point is your tip. All right, so that's why this is called the tip to tail method. All right, so we're gonna be doing a combination of math using Pythagorean theorem and um, trigonometry functions. So that's our sine, cosine, tangent functions to find the resultant angles um, for our vectors, okay? All right, so again, what I just showed you, um, here they went ahead and put vector A and vector B. Sometimes you can see it, you might see it as X um, squared plus Y squared under the square root. So uh, sometimes there are gonna be different variables, but the setup is the same for the equation. So again, these trig reviews um, are crucial to making sure that you understand um, those functions. So again, Sakatoa, that's your sine, opposite over hypotenuse, uh, your cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and then your tangent is your opposite over your adjacent. All right, so go back into this you know, slide just to make sure you have these on your formula sheet um, so that is up to date and you'll be able to do your homework problems. Okay, so this is the mathematical method. So let me clear off the whiteboard so we can do this. Our vector A 
um, is 85 to the west. And then our B vector is 150 to the north. Now this N right here is in Newtons. So this is more of a force type of problem, All right? So, and then it told us to find the resultant, All right? So the resultant will go from the beginning of A uh, to the um, end of B. Now they have two resultants here and that's because this, they're trying to set it up like a parallelogram they just didn't put the um, A up here this time. So let's go ahead and do that on the whiteboard. So let me clear this off. All right, so vector A is 85 west, vector B is 150 north. 85 west, 150 north. So let's write down that information. Eighty-five to the west, hundred and fifty newtons to the north. And I'm writing out the directions because I don't want you to think this N stands for north. This is newtons. All right. So if we do the same thing we've been doing. All right, would you do the tip to tail method? Now, 85 is less than 150. So this uh, vector for A needs to be shorter than the one that we draw for vector B, okay? All right, so let's do vector A. It's gonna be 85 to the west, right? To the west is to the left. So let's do 85 let's say this is 85 newtons to the west. All right, this is vector A. And then uh, vector B is 150 to the north. So vector B needs to be longer and this is to the north. All right, so vector B needs to be slightly longer than vector A. So let's make sure our vector A is visibly shorter. All right, so this is vector B right here. All right, and so from the beginning of vector A, which is our tail end here, and then the ending of vector B, which is our tip. So this is the resultant from part A to part B. All right, I know this isn't straight, but um, it's kind of hard to do that on this tablet, but you can try to you know, get it as straight as possible on your, um, on your end. Let's see if I can do a little bit of erasing. Make that look a little bit better. All right, it's not perfect, but you get the point. So this right here was our 150 Newtons north. That's the vector B. All right, so our resultant vector here is unknown. All right, so we're gonna use Pythagorean theorem. All right. To find out what R is. All right, so if we do 85 squared plus 150 squared, the square root of 85 squared plus the square root of 50 squared. 172 Newtons, and that is correct. So if you did not get that answer, please uh, type it into your calculator a bit more carefully to see if you get the correct answer of 172, All right? So this is gonna be the square root of 85 squared plus 150 squared, All right? You should have ended up with 172. 
And then our SI unit uh, here for A and B is in Newtons. So for the results, it's gonna also be in Newtons.